Hi, this is Janine Sows and I'm Janine. I talk about sewing for a woman over 50. In this video, I'll share with you two makes, talk about what I'm planning to make in the immediate future, and tell you just a little bit about a class that I attended this past weekend. Like most people who live in the Northern Hemisphere, in the Northern part of the Northern Hemisphere, I've been looking at my winter wardrobe and it is quite depressing. Number one, I just put it away about five months ago and I'm already wearing those clothes again. But number two, I don't have a lot of things I like to wear. I only have a handful of cozy kind of weekend evening tops that I like and frankly I am sick of all of them. So I decided that it was time to sew up a couple of tops that are warm. I don't necessarily need work tops because I wear jackets and cardigans to work but for home I don't always like to have to wear a sweater and everybody's feeling the pinch of higher energy prices of inflation this year so I don't necessarily want to be cranking up the heat or turning on the fireplace. So it's time to sew up some tops that are going to keep me cozy. I decided to shop my patterns and pulled out Quick Sew 3915, which has ruched neck. This one here is the one I've made. This has a lapped collar with some gathering and then four buttons that are on decorative. They're just decorative. This is the first top I made, and if you've watched my videos in the last little while, you might say, why are you wearing black? I thought you weren't going to wear black anymore. Well, I had black in my stash, and I do want to sew up my stash. I didn't want to go out shopping for something, and honestly, I kind of thought this would be a good fabric for winter because it's a nice French terry that I picked up at Fabric Mart Fabrics when we lived in PA, so I paid nothing because I bought it in the store. And I thought too, with black, if I have to, I can wear like a scarf or something to add some color to my face. But if I have fabric and I need it to make a toile or a wearable toile, I'm gonna use it. And once I pulled out the pattern, I looked at some of the reviews for it. And a couple of people said that they thought the arm side was a little bit low. And I have noticed that on other quick sew tops that I've made. I'm gonna pop a picture in here. You can see that the arm side is pretty low on it. Certainly much lower than tops that I've made using other patterns. So I thought, while I've got this nice fresh pattern and I'm not in a rush, I'm gonna trace it off and make the adjustments that I need to. So for this, I used the size medium shoulder because my shoulder is kind of short. And then I also raised the arm side. And I used Nancy Zeman's Pivot and Slide to make those adjustments. So I used the smaller shoulder, pivoted out to the large bust and waist and hips, and then slid everything up for the arm side. And I was quite happy with how it worked. Yeah, it took a few more minutes. Maybe it took me an extra hour, but I'm trying to be more patient and do a lot of deep breathing, meditating breathing, to just take my time with some of this stuff and not put unnecessary pressure on myself to get something done really quickly when I don't really need it. So I sewed this up. Uh, once it was sewn up, I took three inches off the length because it was awfully long. And I was really happy with it. I wore it around last weekend and I thought, I wanna make another version of this. So for this one, I pulled out a piece of fabric that I bought in the spring and I think it will work with gray. So it's, you know, it sort of works with my color scheme and it is technically a spring fabric because of the pictures on it, but it's this stretch cotton. I think it's from Stoff. I'll put the link down below. It's a nice fabric. I got this at Rick Rock Textiles here in Calgary. It's kitties, but it's not like in your face kitties. It's kind of cute. So I made this again using this fabric. And this fabric's a little bit lighter, so it was actually a bit easier to work with on the neck band and the ruching. So there it is there. 
with the little decorative buttons. And this, you have to put all those pieces together before you stitch it up. So my tip, if you were to decide to sew this, hand baste. I hand basted all of this together because here we have four layers of collar plus the bodice. And then on this side, we have the four layers plus the little loops, button loops. So hand basting meant it was done right the first time. And again, it took a little more time, but it was worth it. So this was made exactly the same way. And this fabric is actually a really nice weight for this top. It's a little bit lighter than the French Terry. One thing I want to point out on this, when I was at Sew Over 50 Frock Tales, one of the items in our little gift bag was tags that said Sew Over 50 on one side and Sew Over Ageism on the other. So I put one of those tags, I'll pop in a proper picture so you can see it. I put one of those tags on the lower, just below my, my waist on my upper hip. So this is, of course you can see the video of it. Um, turned out really well. I think this is a nice style. I'm not going to make a hundred of them, but I will probably use this pattern again because again, it's just kind of nice and elevated. And I think it, you know, it'd be nice maybe with a contrast collar on it or something. Um, then it would actually look like a scarf. You could probably do it in a chiffon or something if you wanted a dressy, dressy top. But this is what I've made. And this is Quick Sew 3915. What do I have planned? I have been out in the stores a fair bit. I've bought some ready to wear uh, and I've tried on a lot of clothes. And that's been quite helpful because I hadn't tried on clothes in probably a year, you know, ready to wear clothes. So that helped me to get some really good ideas about things that I want to make. And as I said, it's going to be mostly casual tops that I can wear, either work from home or on the weekends. I went out and I tried on different things in stores and I did buy a couple of things. I bought a top in Edinburgh that is sort of bat sleeve, bat wing, bat sleeve. And I liked that so much more than I thought I would. Then I did some shopping here and I wound up buying a shacket. I really did not like the idea of a shacket until I tried on this one. And it is, I'm going to pop up a picture of this one here too. It's stretch corduroy, stretch wide whale corduroy. It's super soft and it's really warm. So it's nice if it's a cold day, not, you know, not in January in Canada, cold day, but if it's a cold day, sorry, there's a cat being problematic. It's, it's the kind of thing that you can throw on and run out to the curb to bring in the recycling bin or something like that. So, but it's good for kind of the in-between weather or this one that I bought, I found that it's great to wear inside of the house. If I don't want to wear a sweater, I just throw on the jacket. So I have found some patterns and I have fabric for some things, not for others. For the jacket, I don't have fabric yet, but I do have a pattern I bought. I looked at a ton of jacket patterns and I wound up buying the Stylark Logan. I just liked the lines of it. it wasn't so much just an oversized men's plaid shirt. I liked the yoke on it and um, it just looked a little bit different from a shirt. I don't know what fabric I'm going to use. It will not be a plaid. It will not be a check. And unfortunately, because I have the cord one that I purchased in my mind, I'm thinking, well, it has to be a wide whale stretch cord. Of course, that's not, I'm going to pick something different. Then for the bat wing, I also found a pattern. It's another style art pattern. It's the style art Rhea. And this is not exactly the same as the ready to wear one, but I thought that it looked nice and I'd give it a try. And for that, I am using a crazy fabric to start. I'm going to use a crazy fabric that I have in my stash and it does actually, well, you'll see. It doesn't really go with my plans. And this is something that I bought last winter. 
this. Isn't this cool? Don't you think this would be nice on something where you get the whole expanse of the sleeve and the bodice? I think it'll be really nice for that. It's such a big print. It has to be on a garment that doesn't have a bunch of seams. So I'm going to try that. If I like it, then I will make at least one in a solid color, probably. So the shacket and the this top are in the immediate future. Um, Last weekend, I went to a pattern alterations class at a local store. It's called, it's a quilting store, but they sell a ton of garment fabric and that's out of hand quilting. They are online and a brick and mortar store and they do bring in a number of instructors for classes. So they brought in Ron Collins, who is a Vogue pattern designer. He designs menswear under Vogue and I think simplicity patterns. He's a, he's an, a pattern insider. So he shared a lot of inform interesting information with us about the pattern companies. Uh, changes that are coming up. I'm not going to say much more than that because I don't think it's really my place, but it was quite interesting. So in the class, he talked a lot about ease and he gave us ease fitting charts. Then he walked through several common alterations to patterns. Things like adding a dart, um, chewing up a horizontal bust dart. I did not know how to do that. That was very helpful. I had no idea. The probably the, the most helpful one was moving a horizontal underarm dart to the waist. I've seen a lot of people talk about, well, just rotate the dart. And I had no idea what that meant. And now I know, and it's so much easier than I thought it was going to be. So I'm excited to try that. I was thinking during the class, I thought, so if you had a striped fabric, you could move the dart to the waist and make it look like your waist was nipped in. Hmm. All about optical illusion. So he went through a bunch of bodice alterations and then he went through a bunch of alterations for pants. I've been doing the top down center out, still certainly learning about it, but what was interesting was that the changes that he made do the exact same thing. They add fabric where we need extra fabric, where we have more body to cover, and they subtract fabric where we have less body to cover. It's just a different way of going about it. Now that I'm starting to think about the, you know, the way fabric is supposed to drape, some of these alterations are making so much more sense to me. By the time I am 99, I will actually have an understanding of some of these things and be able to talk intelligently. So the final thing in the class was he had us break into groups of two and we um, measured each other and just wrote down all kinds of measurements, things that I wouldn't normally do and certainly measurements that you can't do by yourself. But it's really helpful for me to know, for example, the cross back measurement versus the cross front measurement. Do I need more on my back or on my front? And what was the other one here? Cross back diagonal measurement. So is one side of me higher than the other? And actually, the right side of me is half an inch higher. My right shoulder is half an inch higher than my left. Super helpful. So um, I wrote all those measurements down and it's going gonna, it's gonna to be so much easier now, especially for things like back length, because I know what my back length is now. I know if I, because I, I had my partner measure me, you know, to... Where would I like a short jacket to end? Where would I like a long jacket to end? Where would I like a knee length skirt to end? So I've got those measurements now and that's gonna be really helpful. So that was a fun class. And Ron Collins comes, he travels quite a bit. I'm not sure if he goes to the States or mostly in Canada, but he's doing a bunch of three day workshops and um, a knit workshop. Um, he's, he's got a bunch of classes planned. 
So if you're in an area where he teaches, I thought it was very helpful. One last thing, I'm adding a regularly scheduled video to my channel. The first Friday of each month, I'm going to post a video that includes information on all of the sewing challenges and sew alongs that are going on in that month. So on November 4th, I'll post a video that has information on challenges and sew alongs for the month of November. Sometimes challenges and sew alongs last more than a month, but if something's less than a month, I won't post it. Sew alongs typically challenge your skills. For example, at the moment, there is a sew along online for people who are making winter coats. And people are learning things like doing the padding and all of the hand stitching and everything. Whereas challenges often challenge your creativity. Sew alongs are done for the love of sewing and challenges there are usually prizes. All of these are online contests. So it doesn't matter where you live, you can participate. So in the video I'll include as much information as I can find about the details, but I'll give you the information you need if you want to find out more. Now for some people that might mean that if they want to enter something, they have to post a picture of themselves on Instagram, but you can always post a picture without your head. And sometimes there are contests where you can do flat legs. You can just lay your clothes out on the floor and arrange them artfully and they can be entered that way. But I thought this would just be a fun way to share some of the really cool things that are going on in the, in the sewing community because it is such a community. So that will start the first Friday of November and continue on the first Friday of every month, hopefully going on for a long time. Thank you so much for watching my channel. I truly appreciate you watching the videos, especially if you stay till the end, if you comment or you like, but even just being part of the community. I can't tell you how much it means to me. I hope you're well, and I'll see you soon.